All right, more on the road stories. Um, so March 14th, 2002, I woke up outside of uh, Tucson, Arizona. Um, and I remember like I woke up and I threw on, I had the first Slipknot album was one of the CDs I brought and like Slipknot, they're pretty heavy, you know, especially that like first album. So I just remember like being kind of tired and just like rocking out, like going down the street, like listening to them. And I ended up, uh, I ended up getting picked up by this guy named Tom. Tom was heading to uh, Daytona Beach, and Tom was like this kind of this older guy. I forget if he was like, he had a car with like a kind of a old like timey sports car on the back. The only thing I really remember about Tom was that he had these, he had a bunch of weed, and he had a bunch of like pre-rolled joints. Like those pre-rolled joints where like somebody took like way too long to roll them, and it's like, man, just come on, dude, like. I got stuff to do today, you know, but you could tell he spent a lot of time and they were all in a cigarette pack and they looked like really legit. Um, but we drove for a while and um, after like a, an hour or so on the ride, or well, I guess, I guess we were on the road for a while, but basically we made it to Demi, New Mexico and he started to have like car problems. So he pulled over, he went to this, um, he pulled into this, uh, a truck stop for uh, or no before dimming we stopped at a uh, at a like one of those like uh, road things where you park I don't know why I'm forgetting the name of it it doesn't matter um, but he was gonna pour water in the the engine to make sure it was like cooling down and so I remember going into like the bathroom and taking like a bird bath you know just like that was the closest thing I'd had to a shower in a couple of days I don't think I, I took a shower at those crackheads place but I washed all up and I remember seeing this kind of uh, like panhandler guy he had this uh kind of like black leather jacket on and he would later uh later um yeah so i'm uh i'm just north of uh i'm in arizona i got picked up outside of tucson someone's asking me where i was at um and so now i'm still like i think still in arizona but eventually i get on the road with this guy tom again and eventually we get to Demi, new mexico and his car is not like it's not working it keeps overheating so he pulls in he brings it to this place to get it checked out. And I remember just like walking around Demi, New Mexico for like a couple of hours, like waiting for him. I remember went and like mailed some postcards to my family from like that I'd gotten in Vegas. And I ended up, uh, finally after a couple hours, he's like, oh, this thing isn't working. It's gonna be, it's gonna take a while. So I just got back on the road. And I ended up getting, so I have my little notebook here. This is what I brought along with me the whole ride. Um, and I ended up getting picked up by this guy Mikey and Mikey is with that leather jacketed uh, panhandler I'd seen at the um, at the little truck stop a couple hours before and his name was Popeye so it's Mikey and Popeye and um, they were professional panhandlers uh, Mikey had obviously just picked up Popeye though like a couple hours before and um, all they did was they would drive from um, just from stop to stop and they would ask people for money um, and they made sure their, their, or at least Mikey, Mikey made sure his gas tank um, his was always like low. So in case somebody didn't want to give him money and they just wanted to fill up gas. So just think next time somebody's asking you for money. like. But this was this guy's like scam. Like he just drove. His plan was to make it to Key West. And like I'm hitchhiking around. Like I want to make it to Key West too. But like he was talking Key West would be like a three month trip because he's just driving really slow. Um, and so we ended up, I remember we drove through El Paso, Texas and like El Paso is right on the border and it's kind of like a gnarly place and like Texas don't mess around when it comes to drugs and this guy's literally we're in traffic and he's like lifting his bong up and like showing it to people in traffic being like, you got weed? And I was just like, man, like we're going to get arrested and go to jail and like there's no way like I'm not going to get in trouble. And we ended up, we finally, we stopped at this gas station and this guy's like, yo, it's time for you to make your, make, make some money since you're riding with us. So I remember I go up to this, this young girl, she's walking into the, the gas station and I was like, uh, I'm having, you know, problems. And I remember kind of like sputtering cause I don't want to, you know, like, I don't want to be asking people for like money when I don't really need it. And I think I made up some story about my brother that was Mikey was my brother. And then we were going to my sister's wedding and we like ran out of like money. So the girl was like, oh, I don't have anything. And this woman overheard us. This woman gives me a dollar. Then a few minutes later, that woman's friend comes over, gives me $5. And then the initial girl I asked got in the car with her mom and her mom gave me $5. So I literally made $11 from asking one person for money. Um, but I felt pretty crappy about it. I gave Mikey the money. I didn't, I didn't really enjoy it. 
And I remember we we left and we drove and then we ended up like the three of us like slept in this car it was somewhere near like Sonora, Texas, um, which was very very strange. Um, and then uh, and of course that guy Mike uh, Popeye he told me a great story about the place to panhandle if you decide you're going to become a bum. Go to uh, Carmel, California. He said during the holidays, people just handing out fifty dollar bills. So, I don't know. It's a different world up there. But um, that was my uh, my second real day on the road. Uh, day four of my my journey. Uh, tune in tomorrow for for more stories. <laughs>